So hi everyone. So let's start with lecture one. So we're going to be covering basically a general sort of introduction of what is optimization and how we define optimization in the context of our um, course. Um, there's a bit of confusion between what is mathematical programming and optimization, and that's something I like to, to clarify from the get-go. Um, then we'll very briefly talk about some linear programming applications. I selected three that are going to, because they are general enough, and they are going to be appearing in our course quite frequently. Um, and, and they also have sort of different structures when it comes to how you model problems. And you're actually going to see that these are like the building uh, parts of many other uh, models that we'll see through our course and you see out there. And then we'll end up today's class, this week's content even with, you know, talking a little bit about the geometry of LPs in a more graphical setting. So we get the intuition we need to move on in terms of developing, you know, advanced solution methods and um, understanding more the geometrical properties that we exploit when, when developing a, a method that can actually find optimal solutions for our optimization problems. So this is the, the agenda for this week. So this first video is going to be about the first part, and then we'll break it into other videos about the second and third part. So you can kind of time um, the way you watch the lectures according to your own convenience. All right, so let's get started. The, so what is optimization really? Um, so I kind of go through this every, in, every time I, I'm teaching an optimization course because um, optimization is one of these words that they have, you know, they, they are sort of an overloaded meaning. They can mean many different things and people sometimes abuse what means uh, optimization. But whenever we talk about optimization in our context, we will be talking about this discipline that is part of applied mathematics. So basically what a, the MA idea is that you're trying to find values for variables that form a given function. And in a way that you're trying to find maximum or, or minimum, maximal or minimal values for these functions. You try to find a maximum point, a maximum point to a minimum point for the function. And there are basically two ways that you can achieve that. Um, one way is, is simply analyzing the properties that your function might have, because by analyzing these properties, you might be able to infer what you're looking for or how, what needs to be satisfied in terms of finding a extreme point, which are these points that will have maximum values or minimum values. Or another idea is to apply a numerical method. So basically, you know what you're looking for, but you can't really simply find a point that satisfies or finding a point that satisfies these properties is, is, is in itself a challenge. So basically what you do, you devise an iterative method, a method, a method that iterates until it finds a point that satisfies these, these properties. And once it does, it stops. So these are the, the competing, the competing ideas, which actually complementary, to be honest. Um, and that sort of idea or discipline or, or framework, if you wish, it, it underlies many different fields. Uh, one of them is operations research, which is the name of our masters, which is the, the name of the chair. I'm a, I'm a professor, um, and which is operations research or operational research. Uh, operational research is the British, uh, is the British version and operations research is the American version. Um, but they mean the same thing, obviously. And, um, but there is also, you know, optimization pops up in economics. Um, those, um, things related with, with, um, demand curves and, and profit curves, and then positioning yourself for trying to find, uh, points of equilibrium in these problems is, is typically a, a optimization task. Statistics, whenever you're fitting a, a distribution model to your data, you are solving an optimization model. And and more broadly and more rec recently, things related to machine learning and artificial intelligence. So things like classification methods, regression, clustering, neural networks, these are all based upon, built upon an underlying optimization method. Um, 
But here in our course, we're going to be looking uh, into optimization within the realm as a core element of something that is called mathematical programming. So mathematical programming different from optimization is something that is more closely connected to operations research. And mathematical programming is, is basically the idea that we can use optimization um, to find uh, best course of actions or, or best strategies for a given real world problem. And mathematical programming is basically the language we use to, to represent this real world problem into a mathematical entity, a mathematical model that can then be solved by an optimization method. So basically the whole story behind mathematical programming is, is this paradigm that when we look at this notion of having a function and trying to find variable values that maximize or minimize its value, the function value, we can make an analogy with the uh, real world setting by looking at thinking of the decision variables as actually being decisions you have to make. So they can be business decisions such as how much to build, how much to produce, how much to send from location A to location B. So they can also be re represent, for example, geometries. So say you're building a bridge and you want to maximize resistance to a different, to a specific type of cargo. Um, so, so that basically are those engineering decisions or design decisions that you control. And on top of that, what you have is the notion of a domain, just like a function is defined in a domain and, you know, can only take values that are from, from a pre-specified domain. We can use this notion of domain to specify constraints to a problem, logic constraints or design constraints, you know, rules that we have to, to, to follow whenever we define what is a feasible decision. So looking at, at our example, again, of the transportation, um, one decision I might have to, to observe a certain capacity that my truck or my arc has from sending product from A to B. And that capacity is a rule as a constraint. So it defines a domain of all possible values I can set to the variable representing the amount of product I send from A to B. And the function is, is the objective function is, is, is the measurement of, of quality. So that's why we call it as an ob, uh, ob objective function because it's, um, it's related to, to measuring the, the quality or the objective we have is to maximize or minimize that, that function. So if we use this analogy, then we can um, create a model by means of mathematical programming that can then be optimized by using an optimization method to find an optimal solution. But these, causes, these two things, optimization and mathematical programming are so interconnected that they, they, cause, they cause some confusion. So you will see that our textbook sometimes is called linear optimization, for example. Um, but we, if you look at other textbooks with the same context, they will be talking about things like linear programming instead, which is, is, is somewhat, is somewhat um, a, a combination of, of mathematical programming and linear optimization becomes linear programming. And we are actually going to use the term linear programming all the time. Linear programming then would be um, basically using mathematical programming to express models that are linear in its relations and then calling a linear optimization method or a method that is designed for problems that are linear. And since we are in the, in the topic of, of linear optimization and linear programming, that leads us to this uh, type of programming. So basically, in terms of a mathematical program, a general mathematical program, um, what we have is that the simpler are the assumptions we are taking, the more likely it is that we, we can actually solve it. So, um, of course, the more, the more complicated, uh, complication is, is perhaps not the best way, to it, but the more complex or challenging are the, the structure, are, are the elements forming your model, the more challenging it will be to solve it. And turns out there is a, there is a, um, a gradient of increase in terms of, of complication, if you wish, that, that goes from linear structures 
to nonlinear structures. And then when you are in the realm of nonlinear structures, there is also, you know, further subclassifications that you could look at. But let's move a few step backs and start just start by just defining some notation we're going to be using to, to represent these things. And actually we're going to use throughout the course all the time as well. So basically whenever I mean X, I'm talking about um, my vector of decision variables. F is what I'm going to represent my objective function. Notice that my, my it's a multidimensional, uh, it's a, is a n-dimensional vector of variables. Um, my function is from Rn to R, so it returns me a real value. So I can then compare my, my decisions. Um, this capital X set is, is going to be my, my ground set. Uh, it's my, it's the, my domain for my function, the, the collection of valid X inputs. Um, and of course, this is going to typically be defined according to the nature of my problem, the constraints I have to satisfy in order for my solution to be feasible. Um, my constraints, they are typically going to be represented by expressions, by functions. So um, one of them is, you will see that I'll use G and H to represent them. J, G for representing inequality constraints, so things that have to reach a certain limit. And H for equality constraints that express equality rules. We'll, we'll have a few examples later on, on, on the way of, of writing those just coming next. Um, but with this notation here, then I can, I can define every, I have everything I need to, to kind of classify the types of mathematical programming that we're going to, uh, or mathematical programs we're going to be looking at in this course. So basically we'll always look be looking into uh, variations of problems of that structure. Basically a problem where we minimize or maximize uh, an objective function F, um, with our decision variables X. And these, uh, this minimization is going to be subject to observing constraints of the form G and constraints of the form H. So G less or equal than zero, H equal than zero. Of course, this, there can be some constants and if these can the, but you know, just for the sake of generality, we tend to put the context, the constants built in, in, in G and, and H. And we also have this set X here that is, is a shorthand for the constraints that are more related to the domain of the variable X. So we'll see later on that sometimes we require that our variables are non-negative. Um, quite often in real world problems, actually, uh, we might also require that our variables are uh, integer or binary. So this is kind of what we encapsulate in these set X here, okay? And with that on, we can start looking at our, you know, general type of problems. So we have linear programs, which are going to be the, the, you know, the, the big stars in our course, uh, are those where, when you look at your objective function, it is strictly linear. So you have a summation of constant time variable times time variable. So if you have say two, your vector X is X one, X two, and your vector of C of coefficient is uh, say C1 and C2. That T thing there represents a dot product. So this is C1 X1 plus C2 X2, right? So that's what that means. Um, so, so if your objective function is, is linear and then your constraints, they are affine. So the difference between linear and affine is just a constant. So, so we say that our function is affine if we expect to have a constant that is independent of the decision variables is translated. Um, and so like, that's what I was saying. This is the, the right-hand side that I'm shifting to the left-hand side. So basically G and H, my constraints, they have to be affine. And my, my domain set is something that looks like this. This is kind of a general assumption of linear programs, but it doesn't necessarily need to be true. You can have in linear programs with negative variables or even variables that are restricted in sign. But then we'll see later on that there is always an equivalent form in which this is true for those linear programs with negative variables or irrestricted variables. So this is kind of like a sort of a general, uh, it seems constraining, but it's actually general enough to express any possible linear program anyway. And this is going to be an important assumption for when we devise uh, a solution method, solution methods for, for linear programs. Um, another type of, of 
programming is, is mixed integer programming. So this is the topic later on in our course as well. So we're going to look into these. So they are basically linear programs, just like those, but with the assumption that your variables, they are constrained to be, um, some of your variables are constrained to be binary uh, or, or integer values. So this could also be um, another way of saying this is uh, K and then some of the, your variables are subject to be integers instead. Um, then again, all integer variables can be represented as binary variables. We're going to look into that later on as well. So the, it turns out that these two things are sort of equivalent, but um, either one would be fine. And you will see binary variables tend to be preferable um, just because they, 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 they create really nice and exploitable structures um, that you can use in your problem. And then finally, we have um, nonlinear programming. So nonlinear programming is the topic of, of a follow-up course that um, that is also taught in a group. I, I am the teacher of that course as well. Um, when we look into the realm where then F, G, and H, they can be whatever. They don't need to be a fine linear, nothing like that. They can be absolutely anything uh, from, from complicated things as, as quadratics or polynomial functions even, or, or even more complicated like logs you know, exponentials and things like that. And we explore quite a bit of, it's a whole set of, of a whole new world of method and technology and, and, and methodology to solve these. And last not least is the, when you combine having integer variables in your, in your um, nonlinear, nonlinear problems. So, so basically um, this course, this here is what we're gonna see in this course. And then this part we see in in nonlinear optimization, which I think is 21, 22. And then this thing here with, you know, if you combine what we see now with what you see in nonlinear optimization, I would say you have a very strong basis to understand the method uh, that there are developed for these types of problems. It's a whole level of complexity. So basically linear programs and linear programs is, is the sort of things that we can solve for the house of million variables and constraints fairly easy on your own laptop. Uh, a mixed integer program, this number just goes down to the house of the 10,000, perhaps 10 or 20,000 variables you can, you can easily solve easily. You can solve, uh, somewhat robust, you know, so we're somewhat robust manner, but it really depends on, on some aspects that we're going to discuss in our course as well. But then when it comes to the realm of nonlinear optimization, things get really complicated. So depending, depending on the structure of your nonlinear program, you can even so either solve it very efficiently or just not be able to solve it at all. Um, and, and putting on top of that, the complexity associated with the mixed integer part, then you are in the realm of very challenging problems, uh, which is great for, for research purposes. So there is a lot of active research is still going on in this realm and specifically this of so we mix it into general linear programs. But that's about, that's about it for this part. We'll, for the next video, we'll move on, on talking about some, some important examples of, of linear programming applications. So see you then.